There is a house in a neighborhood that no one ever goes to. Or at least we think. No one ever seems to be living there normally. But sometimes there are strange cars that pull in there during random nights. I swear that I walked by one night and saw someone on the front porch just staring at me. But I couldn't tell. I was staring at what I thought were eyes, just waiting for some movement. But whatever it was, never moved. Someone distracted me by calling my name. And when I looked back, whatever it was had disappeared. I felt like I had just imagined it. So in the neighborhood, it was just known that there was something odd about the house. So when it was the week of Halloween, and we saw some construction happening in the front yard, we were all confused. There was a crew putting up plywood walls and painting it black. I asked one of the guys what they were doing, and he said all he knew is that they needed to put up some walls and was not sure what it was for. The neighborhood was getting excited as we saw some Halloween decorations multiplying in their front yard of a once quiet and seemingly abandoned house. It was Halloween night and my friends and I saw a huge line outside the abandoned house. It had transformed into a full-blown professional haunted house. Truly amazing, we all thought. There were people in costumes handing out candy to people in line. You could hear some fun screams inside the newly constructed walls. We got in line, of course, looking forward to seeing what it was all about. But whose idea was it to build a haunted house here? I did notice one thing while standing there. I saw people going in, but I never saw anybody coming out. I thought it was odd, but I figured there must be a reasonable explanation. As we entered the walls, we were finally inside. There was a red light illuminating in the background, and the usual haunted house stuff. It was awesome. Lots of jump scares from people. The pathway of walls took us through the house, where we saw the bloody kitchen with fake body parts everywhere and a butcher guy with a big meat cleaver scaring us. It was fun and scary. We proceeded through the house and went through the basement. Then we started to see things that we couldn't explain. Things moving on their own and chairs levitating in the air. I don't know how they did it, but it was impressive. I started to have the hairs in the back of my neck stand up when there was a giant hole in the basement wall and we were going through it. We were now in the sewer, which was still decorated, but smelled terrible. Everyone in line was starting to regret their decision and we started to look for a way out. There were some manhole exits to left and right where some people were going up metal ladders to get out of the smelly sewer but my friends and I had to see where this haunted house was ending. We keep moving forward, and suddenly, it was just the four of us. We were all walking toward the darkness, when we heard a loud, animalistic roar in the distance. We all looked at each other, feeling scared, and started to back up. I looked around and saw some red paint on the walls all around us. Something caught my foot in the sewer water I was stepping in. I bent over to pick whatever it was up out of the water, and in my hand was a human skull. That was our cue to get the hell out of there. Suddenly, we heard a grunting sound on a creature that was running as fast as possible right towards us. We all ran back where everyone else escaped, trying to get away from the creature. When the light hit, it looked like a massive man with hair all over his body. We were in a full sprint now, and all located an exit. We went up the ladders and got to the surface just in time. I could see the wolf-like creature below when I closed the manhole. We all ran to the line and told everyone not to go. It was a trap. The people in line were a little confused, like they did not believe us, when suddenly there was a faint scream sound. There was a mad rush from inside the house, people stampeding out and knocking each other over. My friends and I had done our job of warning everyone, and we were leaving. The last thing I saw when we were far enough away is the wolfman now tearing through three people running away from that house. It was the worst Halloween I had ever experienced. A few friends and I were going to a mysterious Halloween rave the night of Halloween. No one knew where it was 
but everyone was talking about it in our somewhat small city of 80,000 people. We were a military town, so there were a lot of transient young people that had moved around with their parents over the years. So anything exciting and different from our boring normal life was really interesting. There were some flyers that came out the week before, but we could all tell that it was just this guy Ryan that was trying to use the excitement of the rave just to get people to come over to his house. The address on the flyer was his house address, hardly a location for a secret underground rave. The day of Halloween fell on a Friday this particular year. I was at school when the real deal, legitimate flyer was found. It looked professional, but the artists were unbelievable. It had Sarah Landry, Charlie Sparks, Farago, Raven, and Selective Response. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't pass on seeing Sarah Landry in real life. My cousin said that she had been to the best concert she had ever seen at 516 South Anderson Street in Los Angeles. I was too young for that at the time, but if I could see her tonight, that would be a dream. I was in. We had the location. It was under the I-40 bridge in an industrial area at 7 p.m. The buzz about the concert was all over and it seemed to be really happening. My friends and I got our costumes ready. We started heading to the location. We got there at 7.20 and could hear the booming in the distant background. We had found the rave. We walked closer, following the sounds. We could see a light show and chem light colors in the distance. We finally got there. We got to the dance floor and the music was so loud and hitting so hard. I looked up at the DJ and it was really her, Sarah Landry. Everyone was jumping and dancing like crazy. We were dancing for a solid hour straight when this cute girl was getting close to me when I was dancing. I thought she was hot, so I danced with her. She seemed to have something special going on, some sexual energy between both of us. I was having the time of my life. I left the crowd to get some water, and the girl followed me. We were flirting and hanging out when she looked at me and said, I like you. I told her, I like you too. I got some waters and gave her one, and she repeated, I like you. At this moment, I realized that I had not really talked to her at all. We were using body language to communicate, or I was talking to her, but she was not talking to me. I tried to get her to engage in an actual conversation, but she would just nod and not respond to me. I finally cornered her on the question by saying, what do you think? She said, I like you. One more time. I decided to start distancing myself from her. I told her that it was nice to meet her, but I had to get back to my friends. We were all supposed to be hanging out after all. She just stared at me. I was not sure if she understood what I was saying. I started to walk away from her and she looked like she was tearing up. I got back to my friends and told them she was weird and would only say one thing over and over. We were all dancing some more when I saw the girl slowly make her way back to where we were in the dance area. I saw this and told the guys to go forward towards the stage. We got on the stage in the background, hoping she would not follow us. As I was dancing, I saw her piercing eyes staring at me. She looked like I betrayed her, but I didn't even know her. I'm glad she finally got the hint and kept her distance though. So now that that was over, I can just say, it was the best concert of my life. My friends and I were all going our separate ways, and suddenly I found myself alone. In the distance, I saw the girl again. She was not saying anything, but was staring at me like she was waiting for me. I walked in a diagonal pattern to avoid her. Then I saw the scariest thing I had ever seen. She bent backwards and put her hands on the ground. With her hands and her feet, she was approaching me at a speed that seemed impossible. I ran as fast as I could from her. 
but in her awkward pose, she was way too fast. I heard some people in the distance and ran towards their voices. I got to them and I said, please help me. Surprised and concerned, they all asked me what's going on. I said, there's a woman chasing me, and they all laughed at me. Man, I wish I had your problems. They looked back to where I said the woman was, and they said they couldn't see anybody. They offered me a ride. I got home safe and sound, but I realized what might have happened. I might have fallen in love with the skinwalker, but it was different from the stories I had heard. I thought they were supposed to be disgusting creatures, but she was beautiful. She was trying to lure me away from everyone so she could do whatever it is that she was trying to do. She almost had me until I realized that she could only say one phrase, which was probably the last words of her last victim. It was the week of Halloween, and I noticed something strange. It had been happening all week. Someone was dressing up as horror movie characters and following me. It started when I saw someone dressed as Michael Myers. I saw him from a distance by a tall bush along the sidewalk I was walking on to get home. He did this weird thing where he turned his head sideways 45 degrees and stared at me. I paused in my walk, concerned, but continued to walk down the sidewalk after a second. He disappeared behind the bushes. When I got to the bushes, I looked behind him and saw no one. I got home that day and saw the same character outside my window, staring up at my apartment window. The next day, when I was driving to the store, I saw someone walk in front of my car from the woods. Whoever it was had a Friday the 13th costume on, which was very movie accurate from the fourth movie specifically. They stopped in front of my car as they crossed the street, turning their head towards me and just stared at me. I tried to see their eyes, but I only saw blackness where their eyes should have been. After a minute or so, they turned their head and continued to walk across the street. That night, I got a phone call from the best scream impersonator I had ever heard asking me if I liked scary movies and all that. I played along, but I was looking out my window at the same time to see if someone was there. I looked carefully and couldn't find anyone. The caller asked me if I saw anything out the window. I paused for a minute and wondered how the caller knew that. They said, I can see you. I closed the curtains to the window and ran to the front door to make sure it was locked. On my way to the front door, the closet burst open behind me and a guy with a scream costume with a real knife started swinging violently at me. The momentum I already had took me straight to the front door. I ran and opened it and got through, went down the stairs of my apartment and got to the parking lot. I looked behind me expecting someone to be chasing me, but I did not see anyone. I called the police. They searched the apartment and did not find anything except for a note. The note only had two words on it. Halloween night. So it's finally Halloween, and I'm so paranoid I'm going crazy. I look at every person as if they're a suspect, and every time it's just some normal person. At this point, the police are following me to make sure I was safe, but I did not feel safe at all. If I could make it through this day, I would be okay, I thought. I kept a low profile, and got through the day. I was invited to a lot of parties, but I turned them all down. Someone was after me for some reason, and I didn't know why. So I wasn't going to risk it by going to some party. The sun set finally, and I felt like this was my end game. I went to my apartment and said goodnight to the police. They told me they'd be parked outside of my place until the morning in case someone suspicious came through. With that, I felt safe and turned in for the night. I brushed my teeth and went to bed. It was sad being forced to skip Halloween, but it was for my life. With the night ending and the police on the lookout, I could finally relax. 
I was woken up in the middle of the night by a noise that startled me. I woke up to see a man dressed as Freddy Krueger standing at the foot of my bed. The last thing I can remember is the knife glove coming towards my face. Hey, Spooky Sooner here. I hope you guys are having a good Halloween season. If you haven't checked out my previous Halloween stories, go check those out now. Um, I'm going to have some music coming out as well uh, that you can use for Halloween. That is Halloween themed. It'll be a good time. So um, we got some Thanksgiving and Christmas horror stories coming up um, for those dates. Um, as well as some other things I'm cooking up. Thanks for all the new subscribers. I'm up to 424, so um, I appreciate everything. Uh, it takes time to write these stories and put them out uh, with a full-time job, so I appreciate that you guys all have the patience to, to wait for those new stories to come out. Anyways, that's all I got. Till next time, stay spooky. I paused for a minute. Up a minute. I swear, th I swear that one night I walked. Fuck. I swear that I walked by one night and saw someone on the French port, on the French porch. <laughs> I swear that my friends and I had done our job of. My friends and I had dub, dub, had dub. So anything exciting and different from our boring show. Farag Farago 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 Everyone was jumped I saw him from a distance by a tall bush around a sidewalk I was walking on to get home fuck the next day I was driving to the store when I saw one. So I saw somebody.